So after that close win for the All Blacks over the Aussies, let's do player ratings. The Australians came back really strong in the last 20. The All Blacks wilted a bit, but they held on. And I'm going to do the ratings a bit differently. Not the normal out of 10 that I do, but feel free to comment out of 10 down below. Because these are two teams that are rebuilding, trying to find their best team, trying to find their best way of playing, I'm going to go and say who's on the up, who is going down in the team, who's staying the same, and maybe who's in danger as well. So nice and arbitrary, a bit of fun. Let me know what you think. Props-wise, starting with the All Blacks, it was a solid day for them. It was a solid day for the Australian props as well. It was a 50-50 scrummaging battle. Not a day for props carrying ball in hand, to be honest, but De Groot and Lomax, they're staying the same. They're the starters in the team, no doubt, as is Taylor. But I think I might push Taylor as an on the up because it's another stellar performance from Taylor. I thought his line out throwing was excellent. Really good round the park once again. He has even improved in my standings, I would say. You could say he's level, but just being so impressed, I'll put him on the up. Second rows, I think we've found the second row pairing. Scott Barrett was better in this game. I thought he you know, did really well, carried really well. Vi's a little bit quicker, a bit younger, a bit more athletic, I think. Good on defence, both of them. Very good in the line-out, challenging the Australian ball. So I think they are the starting pairing. I'd have Vi on the up and Barrett on the up because I think there was a fight for who's going to be the starting pairing. We didn't see Tupulutu in this game. Darry coming on, I think has to be on the down. I'm going to put all the subs on the down, actually, just because it coincides with them falling off. But Darry did come on, uh, give away a bad pass, and I think maybe led to a try. So he didn't have an impact, and he's not going to be starting. So Barrett and Vai both on the up. I think they've cemented themselves as the starters. Into the back row, and we had two Ardi surveyors, basically. Ardi Sveyer Sr. was amazing, and Ardi Sveyer Jr. was equally amazing. That's Wallace Satiti. Both got amazing footwork, powerful in the carry, great quick turnovers. Indeed, Satiti turned over a ball right on his own line to save a try and maybe even close out the match there. They were both stellar. I think the question is, do you start them both, or are they so good, do you have to save one for the bench because the bench isn't doing it? At the moment, you'd want to start them both because they're so good. So I think Satiti on the up for sure. Surveyor probably stays as he is because he's pretty much always that good. Sam Kane, I think on the down, to be honest, he's there to tackle and ruck. And he did tackle and ruck apart from the one time he needed to tackle Fesler to stop the try and he missed a tackle. It's tough, it happens in rugby, but that's what he was there for and he didn't do his job. And there's other guys that could do a similar job. Jacobson could do it, Blackadder could do it, Papalihi could do it. And Kane's out at the end of the year. So it's a bit of a funny one, bit of a placeholder player, as maybe are a couple of others, actually. So I'd say he's on the down and maybe we will see him phased out. He gives his all, but not a lot else. And then he missed that tackle for the try. So has to be on the down. Then into the backs and Cortis Ratama. It was his best game for the All Blacks. Great to see. He hits hard in defence. He snipes in attack. Really good. Nearly got an amazing breakaway try, but it was called back. His kicking was good as well. So that is the one for him to say, yes, I am here. I am the starter for now until Roy Gard maybe comes back and they can battle it out. So that was good news. He's on the up. His other halfback pairing, Damien McKenzie, though, probably has to be on the down. He's got so much talent. He does amazing things. His goal kicking was good. Did some high bombs, maybe a bit too far. But anyway, made some great breaks, but then just forces it too much. It's kind of a thing, um, I follow England, of course, that Marcus Smith suffers from sometimes when you know you've got talent and you just force it too much. Mackenzie again, forcing offloads, forcing passes, when maybe when they're in great positions, he should just say, right, let's stay in this position and bash away and we're going to score eventually. They could have pulled ahead with a couple of those breaks, which he was just too desperate to finish in one go. So has to be on a down. And is he another placeholder 10 are they waiting, as a commenter said, for Richie Mwanga to come back? The back line did pretty well, to be honest. Geordie Barrett, another solid game. He stays the same. He, he is their 12. Maybe if I was being picky, I'd like to see him explode into contact a bit more. But he's a big lad. He takes it up and his skills are good. Yuani had a decent game. A counter ruck, which isn't normally his thing. He's clearly working on that. Was good. Made a few breaks, but then also threw the ball away a couple of times. So I think it was what he had to do. And I don't think there's too much pressure on him. At the moment, I think Proctor would be the man to put pressure on him, but he hasn't played yet. So I think Ioane stays the same, Barrett stays the same, and I think Caleb Clark has to be on the up as well. He is nailed on starter. He gives you power 
and great high ball game. I like his handling as well now. He's a better all-round player than he used to be, so definitely on the up. Miss him so much when he's not there. Reese had to come in at the last minute and had a decent game. I'm not quite sure he is the absolute top level, but he had a good game in this one, so I'll put him on the up because he had a poor game last time out. And on the up, I'll put Will Jordan because he had to go to 15 at the last minute for Bowden Barrett. He hasn't played great at 15 for the All Blacks. And this was a good game, particularly uh, in attack, slicing apart the Wallabies with that searing pace. That's what he's really good for. And he didn't make any errors with his kicking, etc. So good showing for Jordan. He's on the up, showing he can do it at fullback. But the big on the down has to be all the subs, I'm afraid. I know Plummer wasn't used, but Omoa Williams Tossi didn't really make that impact. The scrum, yeah, I'll give them that. They won their first scrum. But apart from that, not too much impact. Darry, like I said, worked hard. Jacobson worked hard. Perinara made a lot of tackles, but I think that's the thing. They come on and they kind of hold on. They're kind of scrambling as they come on. But in the last 20, we know that's where games are generally won in international rugby. And they're coming on and just hanging on. And there was a comment in the video from the match report. If you haven't seen the match report, I go into loads of detail about the game. And that was saying in the last five games of the Rugby Championship, of course, the All Blacks haven't scored a point in the last 20. I haven't checked that, but they definitely don't do well in the last 20. And it makes sense where they're doing well in defence, these subs, but that's not really what they're there for when they're on top in the ascendancy as they was. They should be there to put their foot you know, on the throat and kill the game, shall we say. Let's get into the Wallabies. Nearly came back and nixed it, of course, but they were pretty bad in that first half for the first kind of 50-60. They they made so many mistakes, so I think it's right they deserve to lose as such. They've got a string, two decent 40s together. They can't seem to do it at the moment. Props again, they are their best props, Bell and Tupu. It wasn't their best game. Bell kind of got bit in for the first try. Tupu, we didn't see a lot of him. You know, he's carrying his, his thing, but we didn't really see it. So I think they stay the same. Clearly the starters. Fezler had a good game, obviously running through Sam Kane, a real highlight. A bit of a tricky game in the line-out, I guess, because they were contesting so much. Much, but I think he stays the same at the moment. He is their starter. On the down, I'm going for Nick Frost. I mean, Frost and Williams are both hard workers, technical. Williams is the younger one, probably the brighter prospect. Frost is a big lad, as in he's got a big frame, but not particularly a world-class athlete, I'd say. Works hard, but you need a little bit more than that. When we saw Salakai Lotto came on straight away, charge down, big break, busting off tackles. That's kind of what you need. So Frost, don't think quite cuts it for me. Williams is kind of on the edge. Question mark for me there. Has he got the physicality? Valentini, when he's on, is outstanding. Carries really well. Has had some poor games in the Rugby Championship. This wasn't one of them. Really good both sides of the ball normally. Did lose it a couple of times. I think he stays the same. He's a starter in that back row. On the up, Fraser McWright. Brilliant. I was a little bit worried him coming on for Tizano because I thought Tizano was a real shining light. But McWright said, I am the starter. I am better. Big tackles. And he shows up in attack as well. Pretty flawless stuff from McWright. Very, very impressive. On the up there. Add in Tizano, two good sevens, good news for Australia. Harry Wilson has to be an arrow up as well. I am not sure he is the world-class athletic talent, the absolute monster of a number eight, but he does everything right, really skillful, hits good lines, tackles his heart out. So yeah, on the up, not sure, top, top tier number eight, but good showing. Nick White has to be on the way down. He was the freshest one, they said, that's why he played, but just did the nuts and bolts, did a lot of whinging, not a lot else. I don't think there's really a future for Nick White going forward. It's been great for Australia throughout his years, but I think phase him out, so on the way down. Now, we've seen quite a lot of Noah Lolaseo, and I think it's an arrow down. I just don't think he's a test match 10. He can do some really good attack. He's unpredictable. He's got some skills in him, but makes errors. I mean, he dropped the first high ball, which led to a try. He wasn't under pressure for that. His kicking to touch isn't the greatest sometimes. Now, maybe he is their best 10 at the moment, but I don't think he's a top level fly half at this level. Arrow down for Marika Corombetti. I think he's out of Australia now. Made some handling errors. Doesn't have the impact he used to. Dangunu will come back in, I'm sure, and maybe from this year, he is phased out of the team completely. Ikitao and Paisami, sometimes they're up, sometimes they're down. I think they're a decent pairing, but again, not world class. Sometimes they can make some big busts, but I don't know. So level for me, they probably are their best centres. They're established pairing, so keep them going. But again, 
not sure they are absolutely top level, but sometimes they can hit some powerful lines. Sometimes they can make some mistakes. Back three, yeah, is a weakness area. Like I said, arrow down for Corin Betty. Kellaway made a load of tackles here. He's good when he does his nuts and bolts well because he's not a stellar attacker, if you like, but he didn't do his nuts and bolts well. So arrow down. If he's at 15, okay doing the nuts and bolts, but he wasn't. He was on the wing. So you don't really have an attacking edge there. So a tricky one, arrow down. Tom Wright. We'll give him an arrow up, definitely, because he didn't make the mistakes that he can do sometimes. And he's the quickest player on the team. He was burning people for fun. A real attacking talent, if he can keep the crazy out of his game. And then for the bench, plenty of arrows up here. Slipper and Alatoa came on. I think they lost their first scrum. Didn't really make a massive impact, but Pengo Amosa came on, hit a great line for a break. Salakai Lotto, like I said, came on, had a huge impact. Gleason as well, McDermott as well. Peach came on, I thought did really well. Maybe he should start in the back three next week. Very powerful in attack and over the ball. So good impact from the bench. Arrows up for most of them. That's what I make of the New Zealand players and the Aussie players. Who's on the up? Who's on the down? Who's staying where they are? Let me know what you think. Subscribe, like if you like these sorts of videos and I'll catch you next time.